Mr. Niranjan, Dr. Niranjan Hirarandani is there straight away from the students, from every one of us who wants to hear your journey, sir. First of all, let me uh, invite the Vice President of the IMC, Mr. Raj Nair, to welcome you and also give his introductory remarks. Thank you. Good afternoon, friends. The young and the not so young. <laughs> all well, we're very happy to welcome all of you here today. Um, we welcome you to a new series, a new interactive series of lectures, which we're going to hold here in this chamber under the banner, Meet Your Business Icon. There's, it's a, there's a very important purpose behind having this series started here at the chamber. Uh, it is not just to provide you with a series of lectures by important and successful people. It's a, something more than that. Uh, this is a series about each one of you, about you. Okay? And why am I saying this? Because if you participate in these kind of lectures and such, such these kind of sessions, the chance of your success, the chance of your being more successful increases and with that, the chance of India succeeding will be increasing. And that's what we want at this chamber. So while designing this series, I've been guided by uh, this, a quote from Brian Chesky. You all heard about Airbnb. He was the founder of it, one of the co-founders rather. He said, if you want to create a great product, just focus on one person. Make that person have the most amazing experience. It's just by coincidence that today's speaker has also got the same philosophy and he's all the while trying to create a great experience for his customers. So for IMC, that one person who we have to focus on you, is you, okay? Uh, we'll, we'll seek your help to make this series better and better. I'm not saying that talks will be better because each one is a great icon himself. So the talk quality will be the same, but your experience will hopefully become better and we will structure it in such a way that it becomes valuable for you. We want to give you an opportunity to hear these successful people, not people who want to go around town showing how successful they are, because they don't need such a, a platform for it, and they're not the types who do that. We want to, you to listen to them, get inspired to act, inspired by learning from their success, the mistakes they've made, the challenges they faced and still came up on top. That's what makes a difference between an icon like the one we have today and the one we're going to have in the future and ordinary people. Okay? And we'd like you to become extraordinary by learning from them. Now, is that all that we want? No. By just merely listening, you're not going to succeed. Um, there is established research which shows that you can increase your ch chances of success by surrounding yourself by people who want success. People who will hold you up against standards which are higher than the standards you set for yourself. So they say that if you surround yourself by people who are successful, you will raise your own goals and set benchmarks which are different from the benchmarks you have if you surround yourself with losers. Because for a temporary period, you might feel very smart compared to the losers around you but ultimately they lead you to mediocrity. That's not what you want. Okay? There's a very famous psychoanalyst who said, it's called Jim Rom, who said, the average of five people who you spend most time with is what you will become. Okay? This is not just some vague statement, it's based on research. The average of what the five people you spend most time with is what you're going to become. So choose the kind of people you want to bec become. Okay? So when you come to this kind of a session where the icon attracts people who want to become something, you will find the audience dotted with people who you should be really networking with, people whom you should be meeting more often, and that will make you successful. I have the great privilege of welcoming Dr. Niranjan Hiranandani, the managing director of Hiranandani Group of Companies, and who, was, uh, who is our own esteemed member and a former president of the chamber. 
Dr. Hiranandani is a son of another Dr. Hiranandani. Okay? Dr. L.H. Hiranandani, a medical genius, a person who is known, who is known all, his life, all over the country, who won the Padma Bhushan. Now, Niranjan chose to get the same title doctor, but by a different route. His thesis was on uh, housing revolution in India, challenges and prospects. Both father and son pro focused on, being, on the well-being of people, but in slightly different ways, right? The words that come to mind when you think of Dr. Niranjan Hiranandani are, when you meet him, are, here's a person who's down to earth, here's a person who's provided brilliant leadership to his group, and that's why it's become what it is. And you can see the zest for life, whether you meet him early morning or late in the evening. Even now he's traveled across the city, he's come back, he said, let's go straight. We said, no, there are a lot of people who called up and said, please delay it by 15 minutes. But he was ready to come and start straight away. Uh, Niranjan started schooling from Campion in Mumbai, Campion School. He got a degree in commerce, but he didn't just merely get a degree in commerce, he stood second in the university. So he was and is someone special. He's so special that he's on, he was in the Forbes list of global billionaires, billionaires, that's in B for Bombay, uh, in the year 2015 and he is among the top 100 richest Indians. But that's not what I admire him for. I admire him for all that he has done before and after. This is just a consequence. His achievements are many. He transformed a barren land in Pawai into a top-of-the-line commercial, residential, recreational, a mixed-use township. I don't, remember, I don't know whether you remember, Niranjan, many years ago, you talked about how it, uh, all this place should develop. And I was saying, he's a good guy, he's dreaming as opposed to a lot of other people who just go and build and make money. I remember that barren land because I used to study right across in the campus many, many years ago when it was totally barren. Uh, Dr. Hiranandani is associated with and holds several key positions in government of India bodies, private and social institutions, and he's contributed in many, many, many ways. He headed, um, he set up this hospital which is named after his late father, and he calls it his building of passion. His other achievements, there are many, as I said. He was instrumental in drafting the state policy on slum rehabilitation, which is intended to make a difference to the life of more than six million slum dwellers in the city. He's a trustee for the creation of the Nathwara Township, a heritage destination. He served on the board of Hadko, an organization which distributes nearly three billion dollars of funding for the housing constructions for uh, low-income uh, people, low-income families. He's an advisor to the government of India on housing and habitat for over a decade. And ser he's serving as the chairman of the housing committee of the FIKI. Um, I don't know. I know it's very embarrassing for you, but they should know this and understand who they're dealing with and when it'll have a, what you say will ring true when they see what you've achieved. So, well, in deference to what he said, I'll say that here's an industry leader whose knowledge of things is up to date. You can catch him any time and talk on any, almost any subject and you'll get something sensible out of him. Uh, IMC, a couple of words about IMC. It was set up 110 years ago. Uh, it has contributed a lot to India during the pre-independence days and the seven decades that followed. We have uh, they've had the privilege of almost every president and prime minister of India coming to this room. And this comp has moved on. And our next endeavor is to see how we can make a difference to the lives of young people and not to the older fogies. That's why the first three rows were reserved for students. It's always reserved for presidents and past presidents and other VIPs. Today, you're the VIPs. And I don't want to stand between you and Dr. Hiranandani. So Niranjan, will you please come over and take over? Let me felicitate you first with a small token of affection. Uh, good evening, everybody. It's such a pleasure to be over here today. 
uh, in this place where I have served as a president of the institute, uh, the Indian Merchants Chamber, and so I'm very grateful. Thank you very much, Mr. Rajnaya, for all the wonderful uh, introduction that you have given. Uh, some deserved, some exaggerated. So, but we'll take it with, take it with our this thing, our Director General, as far as this concerned. I'm very honored with the front line uh, over here, Suresh Bhai Kotak, uh, my mentor again, Manju Dichani, uh, Swati, fantastic, Tanil Bhai, Mahesh Bhai, all our wonderful thing. Pranay Vakil has been my uh, teacher and my guru in the labor line, all our friends uh, over here. Thank you very much for being here today. Uh, today, I want to share with you some of the thoughts and experiences that I have. I, I love to speak, and especially when I have uh, young people like you, I go slightly overboard, so stop me and all that if you think that I'm really getting boring at any point of time and shoot me some questions. What I'm going to really do is I'm going to speak for about 20, 25 minutes. And then uh, I'm going to open it uh, up to interactive session. And if you don't have questions, then I'll go away. And uh, so the threat is that I'll need questions from you. And uh, I'll try to answer them and try to expound more things from the questions you have. So if you go to sleep, then uh, I'll disappear. So that's a threat that I have to the students who are here in the class, uh, which is not a class, but it's really wonderful to do it. Uh, the first thing I want to share with you is that I did my PhD last year. At the age of 66, I'm now 67. So learning has been a necessity, which I feel. And uh, the, learning, the PhD I did because of a person over here sitting, which is Principal Manju Nichani, who instigated me that, you know, I still need to be more qualified because I'm not qualified enough. So, uh, you know, life is full of learning, and if you don't learn all your life, it's incomplete. So don't stop learning, no matter what your age is. And the more older you get, the more you have left to learn. So please don't think that you have to stop learning and that you're really going to be able to work there. Sorry. Oh, I did PhD in housing, and uh, it was on housing uh, for India, and something which the aspirations meet to the Prime Minister's requirement in terms of creating housing for all, and the issues which are correlated to that. So first and foremost, I want to learn every day. I learn from everybody. There are lots of people you learn. And what Mr. Raj Nayak correctly said, that you know you have to constantly think of somebody you aspire towards and somebody who can be your mentor. Different times in life, different people will be mentors. In your colleges, a teacher could be a mentor, somebody who's a business icon, who could be uh, somebody like I met the other person, uh, Mr. Vijay Shekhar, from a PTM the other day, a young guy, and I felt that he could be my mentor, and it's good to learn from him. When I started my career in the real estate side, I had a person by the name of Dr. Maker, the maker, the people who made Nariman Point buildings at that time when I started. Then the Raijas became my gurus. Then after that, I went to one Mr. Lokanwala who did the Lokanwala complex as my guru in thing. I went to Singapore and the Housing Development Board created townships over there. Uh, so we had several gurus in my life and you constantly love to love, emulate and mentor. You don't copy. You never copy a guru. You learn good examples and ideas from a guru, and then afterwards you move forward. So the application of mine. If I saw Mr. Maker as a guru and he made good buildings, I don't copy and paste his building. You don't copy and paste, but you pick up ideas of what he really wants to do, and that's how you really become better and better. So you pick up good ideas, good thoughts, good feelings about the things that you have done, and that's where you have correctly, Mr. Nair just said, and I'm just giving you an example of what he said is the good thing. You think along with it. When you say you spend time with your guru, it doesn't mean only physical time. It means your mental time. When you assimilate the ideas, either by reading, either by talking, either by seeing what those people have done, how by example they are really getting to do it, you learn, learn, and learn. So one most important thing in life is to continue to learn. There's another reason why you have to learn, and that's probably why you will have to learn, not because you want to learn, because you have to do it. I finished my chartered accountancy 35 years ago. 
Now, when I did my chartered accountancy, what I learned as a chartered accountant was good to me, for me for almost 20 years. Though I had to learn, but it was good for me in the sense that the knowledge base was fine. In the last 10 to 15 years, what I have learned again, because all new things have happened as far as that is concerned, including computerization, audit, which has to be done through the computer systems rather than the physical uh, computer checks that you really had to do. You had to change all the time. All the new things that you have, new laws have come in, new systems have come in, mergers, acquisitions, all those things have come into the chartered accountancy field. So now, if I became a chartered accountant this year, my knowledge in learning of what is taught in the examination will not last 10 years. I'm saying not last because you have to continuously learn what are the new things to taking place. In fact, the knowledge base is changing so fast that sometimes when you have passed two years ago, you lost it all because so many things have changed as far as systems and things have concerned to do it. So one good learning in my life that I've done is to see how can I learn again. So I do buildings, as you know. So what happens? I think I've made a wonderful building and everybody claps. Oh, wonderful thing you have done. Oh, I get an award for making a good building. And it's fine and excellent. So it's a good building that I've done. Is that enough for me to make the next building? The answer is no. Every time you want to make the next building, you have to think, what can I do better than what I did before? And how can I see to it that the next change that takes place is actually more aspirational than what I did yesterday? Because that's the only way you can keep up with the things that are there in the, in the world that you are going to now be with because everybody has to continuously improve whatever you have been made and all. But the aspiration may remain the same. For example, let me tell you, I was brought up in Malabar Hill. My father, Dr. L. Chiranandani, of whom you mentioned over here, is, had a house in Malabar Hill. So I was brought up there, Campion School, Sydney College. In those days, that was the college. And I did my chartered accountancy in South Mumbai. But my project started in Pawai. Now, Pawai was deep suburbs. In those days, it was actually far away from the madding crowd. And there was nothing really to achieve. When I went there, the copy and paste of the buildings was not really the thing in some simply picking up a design of a building and putting it there. It was not about that. It was about a dream which was aspirational. What was my dream? My dream was that I was brought up in Malbar Hill which was considered at that point of time one of the best areas and today also it's a good area but not the best area. And I said every building made in Pawai has to be better than a building in Malabar Hill. Every building. Then we made gardens. We made 100 acres of gardens and forests. And I said every meter, square meter of garden has to be better than Hanging Garden, Kamla Nehru Park, and PDP. So all the gardens in Pawai are better than Hanging Garden, Kamla Nehru Park and PDP. I didn't copy paste Hanging Garden, Kamla Nehru Park, but I used that as a benchmark of it. I went to Campion School, which was an excellent school at that point of time, lovely back garden. We used to play football in the Cooperage uh, uh, Gardens in front. So it was a wonderful place which are there. I built a school and I said it has to be definitely better than my school, Campion. So the children who stay and live and study in Pawai will have a school better than that. My father was an eminent doctor. He worked in Bombay Hospital. He worked in Bridge Candy Hospital. He worked in Jaslok Hospital all his life and Nair Hospital and other hospitals too. And I made a hospital and I made a benchmark to say that the Pawai Hiranandani Hospital has to be better than Jaslok then Bridge Candy, then Bombay Hospital, Naya, and all the things that are available in that hospital has to be better than that. 
I didn't copy the best thing of Bombay Hospital. I didn't copy the best piece of rich candy because the benchmark was the world. I went to I went to Norway to see a hospital. I went to Calcutta to see a hospital. I went to see uh, I went even to the Ali Khan Hospital in Karachi to see a hospital because I was told that was an excellent hospital and it is. I went to see that hospital. I saw all the hospitals in Mumbai, picked up big values from each of the hospitals, and then emulated the best to put it there. It was not copy-paste. It was the idea, the thought, the emulation of that example to do. So we don't copy-paste anything, but we learn from each of the examples that we do, and then we really work towards it. So what you really need to do, as Mr. Raj Nair correctly said, you need to move in the environment of what you have to learn to do the same as far as this is concerned. I remember the story Mr. Suresh Kotak told us in one of the lectures that he did over here. And he said that my son just happens to be, Uday Kotak happens to be his son. And he said that he had a mentor with whom he worked with. And that is what made him the banker that he is. And I think you mentioned H.T. Parekh, if I'm not mistaken. And H.T. Parekh was his son, uh, 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 son, Mr. Uday Kotak's mentor. And you can see that because he has a father like Suresh Kotak and a mentor like H.T. Parekh, that Mr. Uday Kotak turned out to be one of the great wonders of the banking in uh, the private sector banking industry in India. So all these examples that we give you is that when you work with a great mentor, you have an average or above average intelligence. You can reach the moon simply by saying that I'm going to do better in terms of what you want to do. The moment your aspiration model is good, that is the way it is. It doesn't matter what you take up in life. My father was a doctor. He wanted me to be a doctor. My elder brother became a doctor. So I got an excuse not to become a doctor. And it needed much more studies. Didn't know that I was getting into something worse than that, which was chartered accountancy. But anyway, at that point of time, I was ignorant about chartered accountancy. I didn't know anybody else. And I really got into that kind of a thing that uh, uh, really uh, changed the whole aspect of it. One of the other things which I find uh, students really doing is that they're not ready to experiment with new things in life, while this new world is constant change. So when you really work on your life, you have to learn to aspire to do newer things which you haven't really seen happen before. If today the digital age has come, all this was not available to you yesterday. So you have to learn to see that the adaption of these new age wonders is really something which is going to be aspirational for you. So we have to see that the change management in your mind to create new ideas. And the second, don't worry about failures. We all fail sometimes. I, if you count the number of failures that I have had, the list will be longer than Mr. Nair's list which he gave you today. So don't think that I've only succeeded. I've also failed many times as far as that is concerned. But it's very interesting to know that, you know, he only told you the, the ones which I really made successes of. And so I can show off when I'm standing over here today. But don't be worried. Because the more work that one does, the more things that one does, the more one will also fail. But there is a big problem. And there is a huge problem. And where is the problem? The problem is not not doing well. The, lo the loss and problem in the mind is much more than the real loss that has taken place. And I'm going to shift from myself to a short story of which I wanted to share with you, my friends, about what it is. My son, Darshan, he's now 35 years old. At the time that I'm telling you a story, he was just 12 years old. And he came to me and he said, Papa, you know, and he, we were at Malabar Hill and he used to play cricket with a uh, tennis ball in the compound of a building called Il Palazzo right next to our building and he used to play with them. So he came back one evening and he said, Papa, you know that uh, 
Aditya's grandfather is the fourth richest person in India. His name happened to be R.P. Goenka. And he was, at that point of time, the fourth richest man in India. But Papa, he's not the richest man in the building. Uh, you know, at that point of time, Dashan was only 12. He didn't talk about money so much. And I was quite wondering, so, you know, first of all, my son talking about like this, wait, obviously he had picked it up from conversation from some of his friends who were talking to him. So I said, what are you talking about? What is this fourth richest person and the richest man in India and things like that? So he says, ha ha, Papa, you give up. And you know, father has to give up. So I gave up. And I said, okay, I give up. You tell me what is it that you want to tell me. So he said very simply that Aditya's grandfather is R.P. Goenka, his fourth richest man in the building, building called Il Palazzo. He walks into a lift and on the another floor walks in a person by the name of Gansham Das Villa. At that point of time, the richest man in India who also lived in Il Palazzo. So he was very sad. Because now he's not the richest man between two of them and he's the fourth richest man in India and still he's a poor man in the building because he's a guy who's richer than him. <laughs> and this is the truth that no matter where you aspire and reach, you're never going to be happy if your attitude in life is that I'm going to be, you know, the richest person, then there's always going to be a situation so even if Mr. Ganchandas Billa was the richest man in India, he was not the richest man in the world. So he'd still be a poor man because compared to the other people, he would be considered to be poor. So many times, uh, you know, uh, the thing. And let's go down to earth. And I'm telling you a story of maybe two years ago. Incidentally, I, I have uh, uh, 17 colleges which I'm associated with, eight schools. So I'm just telling you about a student from a school. A, a, a boy goes to a holiday in, uh, in, during May vacation with his cousins. There are five of the cousins, so two parents, uh, two brothers, their sister. Each of them have two children. One of them has one child. And these five go to Mahabaleshwar for a holiday. And they have a gala time for 30 days of May. They take a bungalow, they go horse riding, they, go, they have horses which are come every morning, they go boating, they go funning, they go hiking. Uh, then they go various places, they're going all this, they have throw parties, they've got other friends who come to their bungalow, they have a gala time. At the end of it, the holiday, they come back to school. Comes back to school and chats with the other child and now with Instagram, with uh, Facebook, shares all the great experiences that he has had with the holiday that he had. Comes back to school, 14th of June, Back to school, showing off to his friends that he had a great time, makes the parents promise next year, you have to take me back to the same place. We will all go unanimously decided among the five, five next generation children and do it. And what happens? Another friend in the same class has put on the net, on Instagram and others, that he went to Switzerland for a holiday. What happens to his happiness? Oh, you went to Mahabaleshwar? Huh? He was bored in his holiday because his father, mother, and the only child went to, Mable, uh, to Switzerland, hated the Alps, nothing to do, no entertainment, no company, goes to boat ride in the uh, 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 Zurich Lake alone, didn't know what to do. In the night, go to sleep early while these children were playing and having fun morning, noon and night. Comes back 100% bored but shows off to this other child and says, you know, I had a gala time. What? We went by business class to Zurich. You know that? Three of us. And we had such a great time. Shows off actually total bloody lies. Total lies. But the mind of this child is destroyed. His happiness is gone. So what has happened? He and you had a great holiday. 
had a wonderful time of their life second to none in the world happiness you could not have imagined and suddenly you come back to the school and a child destroys it they not only destroys it to such an extent that today let me share with you that a friend of mine whose sons are ias officers in the government of maharashtra the father is principal secretary to the chief minister his wife is today urban development secretary a child out of this kind of stupid depression commits suicide jumps from the 20th floor of darya mahal gets good results in his school joins the law college of uh, symbiosis uh, college in uh, this thing spends one week there comes back depressed for no good reason no good reason silly things like this and commits suicide what am i trying to share with you my friends that happiness is a state of mind which you can bring about only by yourself if you rely on the external world and the external issues that are there you will never be happy you can never ever be happy by a comparative model of where you are as compared to the others i'm not saying you shouldn't aspire you should aspire to reach the moon you should aspire for the best you should never be second you should never aspire to be number 2 but don't ever worry about where you are as compared to the external world as long as you are there in your own mind and remember that will never be there my son got a new car but it was at that time an ex car a skoda car but his friend got a mercedes benz every time they came to school this child looked at that mercedes benz and died destroyed his happiness can you imagine if that is the way you as students and me as businessmen or me as people in life are going to live life you will be only fit to commit suicide you will never be fit to be happy there is no such thing as external happiness no one can give you happiness or unhappiness except your own mind the day you can fix the fact that an external factor does not give you happiness i'm not saying that you should not be happy with what you have and what you aspire for of course you have but if you allow any of the external things in life to destroy your happiness please for god's sake the end of the destruction will be that your life will be useless and unhappiness we all should be happy with what we have and we should aspire and perspire to be what should be the best and why do i say that this is what you really need to do it's because we all have become victims of this thought i'm going to ask you a couple of questions quickly because i find one or two people are sleepy do you know who is the richest man in india <laughs> almost everybody knows who is the richest who is the richest man in the world ambani yeah yes. congratulations who is the richest man in the world okay it's wonderful that you know you know about people who are rich now i'm going to ask you a couple of more important question than knowing who's rich india used to beg for food and we had a what we must be must have read or heard about the green revolution of india after which we never required shortage of food do you know who did the green revolution of india one person among the young people nobody okay do you people know who is mahatma gandhi 
No. I'm talking to the younger people. Can you tell me where is the tallest statue of Mahatma Gandhi in Mumbai city? Put your hand up and answer. Don't answer without. Not you, please. I want the students. No, please. Students, any of the students know where? Any one of you know? How many of you know? Where is the tallest statue of Mahatma Gandhi in Mumbai? Out of the students, none of you. Is Mahatma Gandhi an important one? Okay. How many of you people live in South Mumbai? Okay, so quite a number of students. I'm giving you a hint. It's in South Mumbai. So all of you know who is the richest person in India. You all know who is the richest person in the world. None of you know about the Green Revolution of India. And you certainly don't know where the biggest statue of Mahatma Gandhi is in Mumbai. Or at least 9 out of 10 do not know. It's very simple. The largest, tallest statue of Mahatma Gandhi is opposite Mantrale in Mumbai. It's a large garden there. And it is the statue, total statue, which is more than 24 feet tall. It's 24 feet tall and it is the tallest statue in this thing. Why am I sharing these questions with you? It is because we in India have followed the American pattern wherein all benchmarks of anything in life is about money and wealth. All other benchmarks are forgotten. You don't understand what is good for your health. You don't understand what is good for your life. You don't even know how to get happiness for yourself. If that is the stage of mind, how can you live life and go through the entire life if you don't have the benchmarks? We have even forgotten where the biggest statue of Mahatma Gandhi, though you may be living in South Mumbai, you have no consideration for that. How do you expect your life and your careers and your future to be satisfied if the only benchmark of most of the people in terms of living life is to be able to compare with the wealth. And why do we do that? Because we bench ourselves with a country called the United States of America. So the benchmark of everybody is the richest country in the world is my benchmark. It is the United States of America. Do you know what is the state of mind of the United States of America people? And let me share this with you, which is more important than anything. Do you know that 75% of the people who live in the United States are on drugs? Are you aware? No? So my aspiration model is to follow and become the United States. And hence, if you were to aspire and become future, 75% of you will be on drugs. If you reach that place, if that is your aspiration model, Mr. Nair, we will now be 75% of these students will be on drugs. If you are in the United States and whatever it is. 50% go to psychiatrists who put them on drugs. 25% of the people take drugs from the streets and then have to go for de-addiction and to psychiatrists for verification. So if the wealth is the real aspiration model of our lives alone, I'm not saying you don't seek wealth. For God's sake, don't misunderstand me. We do need, like you need air, like you need water, like you need food, like you need exercise, like you need clothes, you also need wealth. But you don't need that much wealth that you have to be a Mukesh Ambani. You need enough wealth to be able to take care of what you're aspiring for and what you can possibly meet, which may be much more earlier than what you will actually aspire for. But if you benchmark yourself 
only in terms of wealth. And if your aspiration model is only the United States wealthy people, like I hear you today, what I see here today among not you alone, but all the students aspiration model, my fear is that ultimately you will be unhappy because your comparison of life is always wealth. My father was a doctor. He was very well off as a doctor, but 75% of the work he did was free. He worked in Nair Hospital, he worked in ENT Hospital, he worked in the other free hospitals also. So the total number of operations that he did was maybe 10,000 or 100,000, I don't know the figure. But 75% of the work he did was free. And he was a very extraordinarily happy man. It didn't matter to him that the only benchmark, and I'm not saying he was a poor man, he made his money also. He made reasonably good money. But if his objective was only money, and he was a good doctor, which he was, he would have made much more money. And I would have been very happy if he would have given me more money. But his happiness would not have been there. Because his desire was to actually be a good, great doctor. And of course he needed to make money, which we all will want to do, like you as students will want to do. But that cannot be the end of your life and thought process. So please, for God's sake, don't only benchmark yourself. Have an aspiration model of what you want to be. You may be an actor, you may be an actress, you may be a singer, you may be a TV artist, you may be an engineer, you may be a lawyer, you may be anything that you aspire for. And there are lots of new things which are happening now, which were not available to us in the earlier period of life. So don't worry about that. As long as you have an aspiration model to do, and gives you reasonable income to live life happily. As far as that is concerned, it's a wonderful thing to do. Mr. Suresh Pai Kotak sitting over here does so much charity along with the business that he runs over there. And I can assure you that he gets more happiness out of the charities that he does as far as that is concerned. If you go down one floor from here, you will see an entire arbitration center which has been set up by him and is named after him during my tenure of being president over here. So it's not necessarily that the money that Suresh Pai Kotak made in his lifetime which is going to be important to him. I'm not saying he didn't make money, the fellow made a lot of money. <laughs> so I'm not on that. I'm not saying he, he shouldn't aspire for money or he didn't aspire for money. But his charitable time, the work he did for charity, and the other things that he did, and the kind of things that he did, including spend time to mentor a person like me, also was extremely important to do. Tanil Khilachan Sahib, also a great businessman sitting over here, doing a lot of charitable work in Gujarat and otherwise. All of them sitting over here who are in business, they become happier people, satisfied people, not because they have aspired to be a little more wealthier, but also the fact that they did so many other things that needed to be done. Mr. Raj Nair talked about various things that I have done in my life, and I want to just show off a little more. I want to share with you that along with the business of business that I do, also take part in 17 colleges. I also take part in eight schools. I also run two hospitals. I also run, uh, I'm a trustee of three temples, and now we run skill development. I have 45,000 students in colleges, 15,000 students in schools, run the hospitals where I have more than 400 doctors, nurses and other people are more than 2,000. So we do all that sort of work. And the happiness that I get from the non-business activity that I do give me as much pleasure, if not more, than the business of business that I do. So happiness cannot be, cannot be measured only by wealth and a position of that. For God's sake, all of us are too influenced by the United States and the ideas and ideals that it have. The only great thing about the United States is the aspiration model. Please copy that. They aspire, they perspire, they work hard. That is very good. But everything is measured in terms of money. Please remove from your mind 
Because the day you remove that from your mind, I promise you, you will be very, very happy people. Happiness for yourself, happiness for your spouse, happiness transmitted to your children, happiness given to your parents. All this combination is going to be huge. And why am I sharing this with you? Because I find in the last few years, this American idea has destroyed the minds of most people. Because what they aspire for is only for how much more can I make. And I'm not saying there's a, that is wrong, but it can't be only that. So please remove that from your mind because the thing that you will probably end up is unhappiness and maybe even suicide. So if you don't want to commit suicide, if you don't want to go to a psychiatrist, if you don't want to get onto the drugs, you need to change your mental mind and say, yes, I'm going to aspire. Yes, I'm going to work hard. Yes, I'm going to do great things. But I certainly don't want to do that part of it. Several things which Mr. Raj Nair mentioned. One of the things which he talked about was the quality of stuff that we make. In India, we all talk about chalta hai. Main kitna palai karu jo chal jayega. How much do I work because I'm only paid this much? How can I do less effort and bigger return? The answer is no. The answer is, how can I aspire to be 10 times better? What has been my aspiration in the last 35 years? I promise you, I have no competition in my mind. I have competition in the world, but not in my mind. Who is the biggest competition to Niranjan Hiranandani? Niranjan Hiranandani. So my last building is my biggest competitor. If I made a good building, how can I make the next building which is better than that previous building? How can I make the next hospital which is better than my earlier hospital? How can I make the next class of students who come out of my schools better than that school? That is an aspiration model that I continue to live. So in 35 years, I will only aspire, perspire to produce better and better examples what is there. If I made speeches to students in the last 20 years, it is my aspiration model that my speech today to you will be more effective than all my speeches in the last 20 years. If I can't achieve that, then I have failed in my speech towards you. So I will never ever want to do less in terms of how I want to speak to you because I am a competitor to Niranjan Hiranandani and not to Mr. Naj Nair who always speaks better than me. So he is not my competitor. He'll never be my competitor. I'll only emulate the good example of what Mr. Raj Nair speaks. And all of you speak. And maybe I learn from the students too. So that's how I want to do it. The other day I went and saw uh, a program in Casey College where there was dancing and music and fun and whatnot. And what is the program called? Where there was dance and the program which I attended last year with, uh, where there was dancing and this thing on the Kiran. Kiran, Kiran festival in KC College I attended and all that. So I always used to think, you know, I mean, those boys and girls, they dance so well and so much fun and all that stuff. So last week I've started learning Bollywood dancing. I got a teacher to do Bollywood dancing. So it's great fun. I started by doing gym exercises because my wife was doing it. So I went and copied her because I said, Chalo, she can't be better than me. So I started doing gymming. And then ultimately I stole her trainer also. And so the trainer trains me. Then I was not happy because, you know, at my age and all that, I need stretches. So I've got a yoga teacher. So three days a week I do gymming. Two days a week I do yoga. And one day a week, because my cardiologist said, that's not enough, you have to do cardio cardiac exercises. So I run every Sunday morning, if you can join me over there, at 6.30 in the morning and on PDP, I run five kilometers every Sunday morning when I'm in Mumbai. So anyone, if you want to join me for running, five kilometers, 6.30 a.m. on Sunday morning, I'm, if I'm in Mumbai, I will run with you. So that's the aspiration model. And I do it day after day, 5.30 in the morning, I get up. 6 o'clock, I'm in the gym. 7 o'clock, I come back. 8 o'clock, I leave for my office. 9 o'clock in Pavai, I'm the first person in my office. Wow. 
The reason is very simple, because I'm a competition to myself. What is it that I can do? Can I dance better than all of you next year? <laughs> Take that competition. All of you, will you dance with me next year? And will you all dance better than me? No way. No way. I promise you I will do a better one than you. Are you ready for the competition? All ready? Youngsters who are ready, please put their hands up. No competition. See, you all are no competition because I'm a competition only to myself. This is exactly it. So what is it that one should aspire for at one age? As I said, I was not competing with anybody. Nobody told me to learn dancing. I just did it myself and I found a teacher. I went to a, a site called Urban Clap if you will want guidance as to how to get a teacher. You, ha you know what is Urban Clap? Okay, so go to Urban Clap, ask for dance teacher and you will be able to get a resource for teaching you this dancing. What am I trying to tell you? You people, young people, have all the resources for the purposes of the digital media in order to do it. There are methods and methods of madness that you can do to important to do it in life. But if you learn to be aspirational, if you learn to learn all your life, if you have to better yourself than what you were yesterday and to know that you're going to be a better person tomorrow, whether in mental and other things, and you don't look outward in order to get happiness for yourself. I'm not saying you shouldn't have friends. I'm not saying that you don't love your people. I'm not saying you don't love your relatives. But that cannot be the benchmark of what you will ultimately do because your aspiration model has to be much higher than that. And if you don't, and if you benchmark that, then by the end of life, you will only be unhappy and maybe you will be on drugs, maybe you will have to see a psychiatrist, and maybe do that. But I know you are not like that. All you kids are aspirational. We have the model of the Prime Minister, Mr. Modi, who from a chaiwala has aspired to be better and better till he became the Prime Minister. So there's no reason why we do not have good examples that you can follow here in this country for the purposes of this. I'm gonna stop here because uh, I can speak forever and you people will start looking at the watch as one or two people have already seen look at the watch. So we leave it to question answers that we have to do in terms of it and uh, if there are good questions we'll have more questions. If you have stupid questions then I'll go away. Thank you. Any questions? I always greeted uh, Sir you as my guru and let me share with the children what I have learned from the Bible is be calm in all situations and be humble and talk nicely to whoever is there in front of you. Second, any functions, whichever have been there, Niranjan Bhai is there, maybe for 30 seconds or for 3 hours, he will come. That is the reason. He just prompted me to come by pray because I stayed at Juhu and I punched Sadhguru Visarjan, road to the clock. I came by train, I am going by by train. What I want from uh, IMC today, though I am a part of the team, I want a video recording to show to my family. <laughs> and to everybody I know, the motivational speech which I heard today from you, so this is my humble request and uh, to our president and vice president that make CDs out of this, let us sell it. I will be the first purchaser, name the boss. <laughs> right. So, let me assure you, Thank you. Let me assure you that we intend to not just do that, but bring out a book, the compilation of all the 12 next year again do the same so that there is something on record people can read and learn of course the audio part yes i don't know
Uh, yeah. So, uh, question, uh, how many hours a day do you work? Uh, and also as a businessman, I do I'm a business, I always fall short of time. So how do you manage time? Because there are so many businesses, so many projects. I don't work at all because all my work is fun. I enjoy my work more than anything else. So I, 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 I thoroughly uh, feel happy in my work. So many times people are saying, how can you be working so long? Uh, the point is very simple. If you enjoy the work that you're doing, it's like going to play. If you go to play and you're enjoying yourself, do you look at the watch or do you find what the time is? I enjoy my work, but I do digress in the sense that I'm not focused on only doing one part of the work at a time. So I kind of move from one to the other. If I'm looking after the, uh, my particular project business at one point of time, the next time I do a creative work of looking of designing new projects, sometimes we're doing project management, sometimes I'm uh, meeting people for architecture, sometimes we are master planning cities. I work uh, with the government on various things. Then I'm looking at schools, then at colleges. For instance, after this meeting, I'm going for a board meeting of one of my colleges. So I go from there. I don't feel uh, tired because uh, I'm thoroughly happy. For instance, will, you, will I treat this, uh, this lecture as my work? Or is it my pleasure? It's my pleasure. So when you come and see me working, I promise you I'm very happy. And uh, if you can convert your work into happiness, you'll never get tired. So how many hours do I work? OK. <coughs> I start. Uh, my home at 8, I reach my office by 9, for why? And I never finish before 8 o'clock, but I'm not in the office. So I go out, I've got colleges, I go for meetings, I go to Mantrale, I have to go to my lawyers, I have so many other works. <coughs> so I'm not sitting on one table for 12 hours. I have a diversified interest, but none of which is work. So what are your major failures? <coughs> Oh, if I tell you the list of my failures, they are larger than Mr. Nair's list of my successes. So the secret is you do so much work, and if you do 100 jobs, you're bound to fail in 10. And uh, because I do 500 things, uh, I have 50 failures, but then I have better, more successes than everybody else, because I'm doing f 500 where other people are doing 100. So if you are doing 100, I work on 500. So I do fail more than you will fail, because you will fail in 50 uh, or 10 or 15. And I will fail in much more than you, but I have, will have achieved much more simply because I've done much more work than you. So I, I, I'm a workaholic, uh, if you call it, but it's a pleasureaholic as far as I'm concerned. People call it workaholism because they're working. For me, it's such a pleasure that I love to do 500 jobs rather than 100 jobs, because you call it a job. But I say I'm doing 500 pleasure item rather than uh, somebody would do 100 works and I would do 500 pleasure items. So uh, if, if you see me working, you'll, I promise you, you won't ever think that I'm working. You'll think it's fun. Yes. 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 Correct. So, you're talking about the Saint Anne School girls. You're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Say so, no. <laughs> Sorry. Try talking to them on the. So, when you see the space of backyarded, so many schools used to share. When you say about a hidden and then guarded, where we have so much of big spaces. So one question I wanted to ask him to listen to your lecture. Mahatma Gandhi had said, be the change which you want to see in the world. Nowadays, I've never seen a building constructed by Iran with a collapse. But nowadays, we find so many bridges so which are constructed in the world, the houses collapsing. And so is it the lapse of morality or is it the money-making exercise that makes persons corrupt what's moral? So I'll answer your first question before I forget the question you've asked. The answer is very simple. 
if I'm making a better building than anybody else, a better building today than I made yesterday and day before, so in 35 years, I continue to make better and better buildings. So the chances, hopefully, of falling will be remote because I've made better and better and better and better and better and better and better buildings. So that's the answer to your question, that the buildings don't fall because I continue to try and make better and better and better and better and better building. So the more years God gives me to live, I'll still make still better building. That's your answer. Next. Sir, second question before others are. Yeah. One is the blue wheel challenge. Blue wheel. Which I can't hear. Put your, put your mic up. A blue wheel, unfortunately, which has taken many lives, which is on this Facebook and Twitter. And they say there are 100 tasks which you have to perform. And the last task, unfortunately, is to jump up. I don't know whether the boys living in Darya was a victim of this blue wheel. No. And another thing, so I really want to find out from you, in today's world, 1947 India started got independence. 1945 this Japan was government. Where is Japan? When? Where is India? Why can't India be as prosperous as let's say China, Japan and we so we are threatened by China saying our 1962 bull day. Why can't we be man of substance? Well, that is exactly the aspiration which is given by the Prime Minister Modi. And uh, people didn't aspire to be the best. Today you have a Prime Minister who says, I want to be the best of the world. So I think if you call a copy the Prime Minister as far as that is concerned, I think we will reach there. So if each one of you as children aspire to work like as hard as the Prime Minister works, he sleeps only four hours. Remember that. And he enjoys every part of the work and I've never seen him wear the same clothes second time. Uh, never. You know, I've seen him hundreds and hundreds of photographs, but I've never seen him. He enjoys wearing nice clothes. Nothing wrong with that, but he aspires to reach the moon. Fantastic. I mean, why do you need a better aspiration model than your prime minister? You don't need to. You'll cross Japan, you'll cross China, you'll cross everybody. When I cross everybody, everybody asks me, oh, now you are the best. I said, I'm not the best because I have to still better myself tomorrow. So, it's a question of... We, will, we can be better than China, we can be better than Japan, we can be better than the United States and we can be better it provided we agree that every day that we work will be better than what we were there yesterday and not the streets of Mumbai which are certainly not better than the best. Yeah. Uh, sir, I wanted to ask a question related to uh, Pradhan Mandri Awas So the government targets to build around 20 million affordable housing by 2022. So how can the private industry and youngsters like us take advantage of this when there is a big problem of politicians, bureaucracy, the underworld? That's the bloody excuse which I will not hear. Please stop making excuses for government not being able to help you. When I met Pawai, they didn't allow me to use concrete roads. We made it. They didn't allow us to use alternative types for plumbing. We did it. We used the best waterproofing material. We were not allowed to use it. We just improved ourselves. Any excuse to say it's because of the politicians this India is not improving, you are at fault. Participate, do it, you improve yourself. If I had tried to copy all the dirty builders in Bombay or the dirty politicians in Mumbai, I would not have succeeded or been where I am. So please don't make excuses that the politicians are bad or the bureaucrats are bad. You just aspire that you should be better and work towards the whole situation. If nothing else, join politics and improve it. So the idea basically is if the young people say that it is because of the politicians that I have failed, then Niranjan Hiranandani would also be a failure. Suresh Pai Kotak would also be a failure. Tanil Kilachan would also be a failure. All of us would be failures if we were relying and benchmarking ourselves with the Dawoods of the world and the uh, crooks of the world and the politicians of the world and the people who are corrupt. Why should you benchmark yourself with, uh, with useless people? What Mr. Raj Naya said, surround your people with people with whom you aspire. Work towards the whole thing. Don't worry about what is around you. There's so much keechered and dirt around you. Do you want to become dirt and keechered? Why can't you stand out like a lotus flower in, the, in, a, in a dirty pond and be the lotus flower of this world? Excellent. The successful. So, 
don't even bother. All the stupid excuses, I don't want to hear from you in the rest of your life. No excuses. Bad politician, bad this, bad courts, bad lawyers, bad anybody. Shit, they will all be bad. So it will become easier for you to be better. Because all the other builders are bad, I suddenly stand out. Everybody should make good buildings, so Niranjan Hiranandani does not stand out. So I'm okay, let them be making the bad building, let it all fall down. The whole build, Bombay will fall down, Hiranandani buildings will remain alive. So the point is very simple. Don't make stupid excuses for your non-success. I didn't have money, I didn't do this, a Chaiwala became Prime Minister. What more better situation India can give you? Son of Suresh Bhai Kotak took up a different line of banking and set up the Kotak Bank. I mean he made an enormous success. Was it because of Suresh Bhai, in spite of Suresh Bhai, in spite of the other banks, in spite of other people? He didn't care. He just made himself successful. So, Niranjan Hiranandani, Raj Nair, all the people sitting in the first row, Manju Nichani, they all made extraordinary successes just because they were them. So, no excuses in your life that because of my father, I didn't get a chance. Because of my mother, I'm a failure. Because she did not allow me to do this, I couldn't do, be a sports person. Because of so and so, this happened to me. All bloody lies and excuses. When the Chaiwala can become Prime Minister in spite of everybody, what can you, you have more resources than that. Your parents are what? Doing what? My father is into real estate. Into real estate. So he has some money. <laughs> <laughs> so if Chaiwala can become Prime Minister, you can become anything in this world and you can certainly make good buildings. So that's the whole idea. Stop making stupid bloody excuses. You will die with those excuses, but you will not be anybody in your life. You have to say, let the dirt be around, the, around you, but I will be good. I will be better. I will be still better. I will be still better that every day that I live, if I'm 67 today and next year I'm 67, 8, if I don't speak better at the age of 68 than 67, I better stop speaking. That is what your aspiration model be there. No excuses, no stories, nothing. And not from anybody who has heard my lecture. So I have to leave at 6.30, yeah? five yeah. minutes left. See, power is being perceived as a startup hub. And you uh, spearheading a diversified group consisting of in hospitals, healthcare, education, real estate. Mm, so, what, what what is your take on making it really, you know, like we have Silicon Valley in the US, similarly, you know, Hawaii, IT, Hawaii is also there, and we have a lot of startups. So, what is your take on it, and what you as a person and your group is doing uh, to make it, uh, you know? We have about uh, 70 startups in Hawaii, which are there, who are Almost uh, three-fourths of them are from IIT and IIMs and uh, they continue to grow. We provide them the necessary resources in our area for the purposes of support. But many of them are housed in other places around Pawai. But somehow or the other, our area has come up maximum as far as this is concerned. So they find that the quality of life for the purposes of such startups is very good. They're not really hungry for large spaces, but they're needing all the resources for the purpose of doing it. So we give a lot of this into our project areas and also in the surrounding areas, a lot of them, IIT themselves are now giving space for such startups to take place. So I think uh, it's nice that they are where we are and uh, we are happy that uh, our area becomes a resource center. So we continue to help uh, some of them to do it, but mostly we provide spaces. We are not doing much else. But the young people over there have done themselves wonderful thing. A lot of people want to invest with them. So there are a lot of people who come there to invest with such people. And the amounts which they make is fantastic, unbelievable. You know, It's fantastic to see such things happening. I wish I was young again, I would have started a startup. So uh, your land purchases have always been ahead of time. I mean, when nobody ventured in that location, you went there and bought land. 
what gave you the conviction that so much of infrastructure will get developed by the government in those locations, whether it is JBLA in Pawai or Golden Road in Thane or airport in Panwel or you know, so all this infrastructure are also important from a connectivity viewpoint. So what gave you that conviction? See, first of all, you have to understand that uh, every business that you do or anything that you do, whether you're a lawyer, you have to have skill sets to be able to understand law, be able to do presentations, understand the cases, fight it, and be able to convince the courts and judges for the purpose of doing it. If you're a doctor, you should have good skills as far as that is concerned. So if you're doing real estate, you have to have an understanding as to where the next areas of growth will come up. So you try to identify which are the objective places where you think that the line will go. You may not succeed 100% of it, but if you are into the line and if you are good at that line and if you pay, pay enough attention to where the growth centers are. For example, we have done Pawai, we have done Thane, Godbandar Road as you mentioned just now. The next is Panvel. We have two highways, we have the uh, Bombay Puna Road, we have the freeway, we have the Navi Mumbai Airport, we have the Cross Harbour Bridge coming, we have the Sain Padwell Freeway, Expressway, we have Naina which is coming up. So for me the next target is Panvel. So Pawai is 250 acres, uh, Thane is 350 acres, uh, Panvel is 580 acres, and then Ali Park is the next destination, you have a row row going on cross, so we do 250 acres. Lonavala, Khandala, everybody wants to go for holidays, so we have 580 acres. So wherever you see the future is going to be there from your mind as far as that is concerned and how you see the entire infrastructure direction going. It may not be 100% correct all the time because not all things happen as you want it. But certainly you have some idea because you are professionalizing in that sphere. So as a doctor, you'd be a good doctor. You're, as a lawyer, you'd be a good lawyer. As an engineer, you'd be a good engineer. And as a developer, you'd be a good developer by identifying. So this is one of the skill sets you develop. But of course, you need some time to develop such skill sets. So, <coughs> two things I need to explain. One is that your father was, uh, in fact, not only popular in India, but he was Asia's best ENT socialist. Uh, probably that record could be corrected. Uh, number two is that you have never failed in the last 40 years because I know you've uh, That's even, lies, 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 lies. <laughs> real estate, you, you have never made a compromise of selling it or suicide sale. You wait, you wait, and you succeed. That's more and more of the end generation need to do that. How do you control that patience of, you know, uh, uh, to be a successful uh, entrepreneurship? So, Number two is that is there any uh, any kind of spirituality has helped you because you said you are going to grow up but any time in this business failure the spirituality has helped you immensely if that is the way no 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 because drug addiction is a dangerous addiction if it can be helping that the last but the least uh, you spoke about your son you spoke little about uh, the the woman behind your success, your wife's success, how did she sustain uh, no, your, your difficult days? Okay, the first thing is that I have failed. I've told you that first. Many failures and I can list many of them. So we work, when you work, you're bound to fail. And you have to accept failures in your life as far as uh, uh, that is concerned. I don't think there is any way. As far as spirituality is concerned, Dada J.P. Vaswani is my spiritual guru and I certainly do follow him. But you have to understand one thing. You cannot rely on spirituality only. You have to have self-confidence and faith in yourself. If you don't have that selfness in your own self, then spirituality is a crutch. You have to use spirituality as a platform. If you use spirituality as a, as, a, as a crutch, then I can commit murder and go to a temple and ask for forgiveness. That is not spirituality. That is bogus spirituality. Like all these bogus godmen are now arrested and put into jail. But if you use spirituality, health, money as a platform to take off to the moon to the next level 
then spirituality is equally important. Unfortunately, we use spirituality as a crutch. That spirituality doesn't work because it is not spirituality. Going to the temple is not spirituality. Being honest is spirituality. Being truthful, honest, committed, all that is spirituality. Going and praying in a particular way and doing puja is going to the church or doing namaz is not spirituality if you don't combine it with a lifestyle or what it is. That is not spirituality. It is actually nothing. It's just a bogus thing. And those who use that type of spirituality use it as a crutch in order to justify to themselves the untruth in their lives. I also use spirituality, but the spirituality has to be to raise yourself to the next level. And when you use spirituality, one of the gurus that I have, where Manju Nichani is also now associated in Sadhu Vaswani mission, lot of things are becoming there. And I use Dada to lift myself to that level, but I don't use him as a crutch in order to make excuses for my failures and not success. You don't do that. Then doesn't work. And your third question was, I forgot. What was about your wife? Oh, about my wife. I'm married to my wife only for 41 years and she still tolerates me in spite of I giving so little to her. So I'm extremely, extremely grateful and we give a lot of space to each other. She's a very hardworking woman and uh, very, very religious. Uh, much more than I am in terms of spirituality. So she has a lot more in that respect to me. She works very hard. She works in the back end of my office. And uh, fantastic uh, we have. We are exactly the opposite of each other. <laughs> and being complimentary, we succeed in life and that's why we still survive together. Which young people don't understand. They don't understand because they expect their spouses and girlfriends and boyfriends to be exactly like them. If you are exactly like them, I would have got bored of her. It's because she's exactly opposite of mine that we still are spice to each other. In the sense, we disagree with everything that we do. But that's the fun of life that we have. And uh, so it's, a, it's, it's really fantastic and wonderful. Just now she's gone to Jindal for 10 days to get her uh, uh, cleansing done of the body. And I refused to go over there whatsoever. Uh, I went to Bangkok for a holiday for three days. <laughs> so, thank you. Uh, Brilliant. Yes. The last question, the very, very last question. The last question. So, my name is Pat Chaira from Disney. And I want to ask you, in light of the monsoon crisis we faced on Tuesday, what do we do to transform Mumbai from just a metropolitan city into a smart city? No, I'll tell you one thing. Uh, a lot of things are wrong with the city. We haven't really looked after it. If you don't look after your body, your mind, your soul, your city, it's going to be degenerated the way it is. Unfortunately, nobody took ownership of the city and said it is there. Most of the people are politicians, 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 and temporary bureaucrats. So nobody has really worked on the city the way you should have done. And if they had been passionate about Mumbai, Mumbai would have been the greatest city in the world. Not in India, but the world. Uh, the Chief Minister is now working on creating good infrastructure for Mumbai. We are going to have 170 kilometers of metro in the next five years. We are going to have Cross Harbour Bridge. We are having additional railway lines which are going to come up. We are going to have a Navi Mumbai airport and uh, we will have a coastal road. So a lot of infrastructure is being done. But you are right, unless the commitment is not there of the polity bureaucracy to this city, Unfortunately, it is not. You don't have anybody saying what I said. I want Mumbai to be the best in the world. If you started that way in the statement that no road will be second best in the world, not in Mumbai, in the world, that is how we need to do it. No school will be second best, which is now made. No hospital will be second best. No, no, no sanitation position will be second. When the British left India in 47, there was not a single unauthorized house. There were chawls, there were other buildings. 
but no unauthorized house. Today, 55% of Mumbai lives in Jopat Bhattis. So it's a sad plight of what we do. It's simply because there is no passion of the leadership, whether it's political, political or bureaucrat, to make the best in the world. Nobody wants to make a better city than it was. It's a lowest common denominator. It's a sad story. And I wish uh, you young people, as you grow, demand from the government and the local people that they have to make it better. And we can. Incidentally, there's 36,000 crores of rupees lying in Bombay Municipal Corporation banks in fixed deposits because they don't know how to use it. Very much, sir. Thank you very much for such an aspirational, inspirational, and uh, what else you said? You said talk about persistence, sensational. You said it. The talk was really, really inspiring, and we got something sort of small, some nuggets of wisdom. Several gurus in life, yet continues to do so even now. Got a PhD. Um, he says benchmark for the and benchmark for the best. Never look at the second best. Don't be discouraged by failure. Don't compare yourself with the others because it's always been on the other side. And happiness is a state of mind. Please emulate that. Thank you, sir. Thank you very, very much. It was a great lecture. <laughs> I must thank also the institutions present here. We have the IES, the, the Sasmira, the Vivekanand Education Society, JBIMS, Indo German Training Center, ISMI, Guru Ghana College of Arts, Science and Commerce, KC College, and probably many, many more. Thank you all. Thank you very, very much for being here. And we look forward to seeing you on our other events that we have in the future.